Sick of getting blisters? Stop slipping and just be comfortable with Pure Grip Socks Pro. Great fit, great comfort, lots of grip, and an even better price. Available now at puregripsocks.com. Inside this box is the new Adidas Predator, and not to spoil the review or anything, but it's so good. Ladies and gentlemen, say hello to the brand new Adidas Predator 30 Elite. L, the L standing for laced or laces, this being the cheapest and what I suspect to be the most popular of the three top end Predator 30 models that have just been introduced. It bears a retail price of $260 and of course doesn't feature that old school fold over flap tongue with the elastic strap, which at the end of the day is very much just an aesthetic thing. If you want that, however, the FT version will run you an extra 20 bucks and that's basically the only difference. What I love about this particular version is it's a true modern interpretation of an Adidas Predator model and probably the most true to the original form that we've seen since the Predator Power Swerve. We're gonna go over absolutely every detail of the Predator 30 Elite, all the new tech, how they fit, how they perform, and ultimately where they rank amongst all the latest top end football boots that are currently available. So if you're on the market for something new and this new Predator has caught your eye, stick around because the information in this video, I guarantee you, will be extremely helpful. So if you're interested in learning more, please stick around. And if you are interested in a pair for yourself, you can pick these up below their normal retail price by way of some exclusive SR4U coupon codes via the first link down below. And as always, if you enjoy these brutally honest reviews, don't forget to drop a like on the video and make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you haven't already, so you don't miss out on my reviews of all the latest football boots as we go into 2024. So first things first, let's talk about the aesthetic because these take on a drastically different look and general shape than what we've seen from the Predator series in quite some time. And I think that's the main reason why so many people are so excited is that these have the general appearance of a more traditional Predator model. Of course, there's the no natural leather upper or no kangaroo leather upper thing that a lot of people will always gripe about when it comes to pretty much any modern pair of football boots. But I think in this day and age, while I think a leather upper would be phenomenal on this particular design, I think it's a little bit unrealistic to expect Adidas or any brand for that matter to launch a full leather boot. It seems like everyone's going in the opposite direction, which is really sad, but for what it is, I think they've done a phenomenal job. With that in mind, I think it's important to look at these from a less hyped up perspective, because realistically, if you compare this new Predator 30 to the accuracy model that it replaces, on paper, they're not that different. This is a hybrid touch 2.0 upper, as was the Predator Accuracy. Yes, you technically have strike skin rubber elements that are a little bit more traditional in terms of what we've seen on past Predator models, but the little rubber elements across the entire Predator Accuracy effectively do the exact same job of providing additional grip. The one thing that you could say is a big difference, an improvement, or perhaps a step back depending on personal preference, is the fact that this is a slimmer fitting football boot overall. I would argue for the better, but depending on foot shape, that might not be the best change for you. And I actually think the changes made to the sole plate and sub pattern are for the better. It certainly brings down the overall weight of the boot and generally makes them feel a little bit less bulky. But all that to say that the Predator Accuracy is still a phenomenal pair of football boots. So if you happen to have those, don't feel like you absolutely need to upgrade because this is more or less still kind of a modified variation of the same concept. With all of that said though, despite the similarities on paper between Pred 30 and Pred Accuracy, this new design genuinely does make for what I would argue is an improved experience overall and one that really stands out in today's current football boot market. Of course, the Hybrid Touch 2.0 upper is going to be the main material you'll find across this entire football boot, which obviously has a big part in terms of how they're going to feel on your feet, as well as how the touch on the ball is going to be. And in terms of out of the box softness, it's definitely not the softest variation of hybrid touch that we've seen from Adidas. You go back to 2014, when we saw it on the F50 Adi Zero, I would argue that was probably the best variation. This is a little bit thicker and certainly more structured than that. And that's actually something that I'm 
thankful for and something that has more or less carried over from the accuracy is that this football boot, despite being relatively thin, doesn't feel like it's barefoot on the ball. It has some substance to it. There's a little bit of a dampened effect and I absolutely love this kind of matte finish that they've gone for on the upper. It has this really nice sense of being leather-like in terms of how this area of the foot interacts with the ball it's not too grippy but it's not overly slick either and then of course you get all that additional grip from the rubber elements in the form of this new strike skin pattern which again kind of harkens back to a bunch of different classic predator models there's a little bit of mania here there's a little bit of accelerator there's a little bit of precision and the rubber itself is extremely soft the fins are super pliable if i just run my finger along you can actually hear how grippy this is and just like all the classic Predator models that came before this, because of that additional grip, basically in this striking area of the foot, the power or the sensation of power and accuracy that you get from the Predator 30 is just phenomenal. The off-centered lacing system, again, kind of relates it back to more or less the prime days of the Adidas Predator series. And I love the fact that they've opted for a traditional U-throat construction with a standalone tongue. So you get this lacing system that runs nice and deep, allowing for plenty of adjustability. And then you have a synthetic tongue, the same material as the rest of the upper, a little bit of memory foam and kind of like this T-shape through the middle to cut down on lace bite. And realistically, the perfect length tongue in terms of where they cut it off where it isn't too short to the point where it's a little bit annoying to put on, and it's not too long to the point where it's kind of curling up the front of your leg. So again, if you don't like the idea of having extra bulk across the top of your foot, this is going to be the ideal variation of the Predator 30, where if you're a little bit more nostalgic and you don't necessarily care about having some extra material, you just want the aesthetic, the extra $20 for the full tongue version, well, I don't have a problem with it. Moving to the rear for the first time in a couple years now, all the top end Adidas Predator models are low cut. There is no mid cut variation anymore. And there is talk of this being a prime knit collar. And there is definitely some prime knit through the rear of the football boot. However, it's there mostly for aesthetic reasons. I don't really see any benefit to making this knit other than the fact that it's very kind of slim along the top edge and does have some nice flexibility. But in general, the construction internally is what needs to be talked about here. And then you can see they've gone with a minimal amount of padding in terms of the design. It's very sculpted and sometimes that can result in discomfort and potentially heel lockdown issues. Depending on the shape of your heel, this might not work out the best for you, but in my personal experience, the step in comfort was really impressive and the heel lockdown was pretty well perfect. It's got this really soft microfiber material, a little bit of texturing in the form of these grip dots, but they're definitely not overly grippy, and just a little bit of a tail at the back to help with putting the boots on, just giving you something to hang on to. But overall, I really like this heel liner, and typically, I'm not a huge fan of this kind of lower profile padding design. This one just works, however. And then the insole, fully removable, pretty much the standard Adidas top end insole. It's got this really soft mesh liner on the surface, obviously a pattern here that does have some texture to it, but I can't say that it really makes any difference in terms of gripping your socks. And then it's made from a single layer of this white foam. That's pretty much the standard comfort insole we've been getting from Adidas more or less since 2010. Which brings us to the base of the boot, an element that most people aren't really talking about, but might actually be the biggest change coming from Predator accuracy. You can see they've gone away with the split sole construction this time around and instead have opted for what is more or less a return to a sprint frame, something along the lines of what the Predator Addy Power had, as well as the Predator LZ1 and 2. However, this does incorporate an external heel counter. It's what they're calling their Control Frame 2.0. And as you can see, it's made from a solid piece of plastic. You have these nice deep stiffener bars on either side of the midfoot. And then the stud pattern itself is classic Adidas. Pretty well the OG F50 Adi Zero stud pattern with a little bit of kind of a narrower profile to this three-sided stud shape, making it a little bit more aggressive. The plastic they've used feels firm, but not overly rigid. It is definitely kind of airing 
being on the side of being very speed boot esque though in terms of giving you that little bit of a spring back effect it's obviously a lot lighter than what was featured on the predator accuracy before it and as far as traction is concerned if you've worn an adidas stud pattern in the last 13 years or so you kind of have an idea of what to expect again i know a lot of people will be disappointed that they didn't bring back that classic bladed trx stud pattern that was so famous on the predator series but also was used on other adidas models as well will we ever see that stud pattern come back i'm not so sure but in terms of objective performance when it comes to traction there's very little to complain about here and in general if you're looking for aggressive traction what they've offered here works extremely well which brings us to the weight where i thought it'd be fun to compare it to the model it replaces in the accuracy 0.1 low and also adidas is making the bold claim of saying the predator 30 elite is the lightest Predator the brand has put out to date. Let's see if that's actually true. Both in the same size 9.5 US, we'll start off with the Accuracy 0.1 low. They weigh in at 8.7 ounces, the equivalent of 247 grams. So definitely not a football boot that was focused around being as light as possible. Not heavy, but certainly not as light as most top end boots. Then we have the new Predator 30, and you can see that they weigh in at 7.7 .7 ounces, the equivalent of 219 grams. So quite a significant weight reduction, an entire ounce, which is very noticeable. These do feel a lot lighter, but whether or not this is actually the lightest Predator they've ever made, I'm not so sure. I'd have to go back and weigh some of the older ones side by side to see if that's actually true. On feet, I am super impressed with the new Predator 30 Elite. And I think you can just see the quality of the fit. It wraps your foot incredibly well the shaping has been significantly changed coming from the predator accuracy which i really liked it had a lot of width and a lot of volume and to a certain extent felt a lot like an old school power boot but maybe more along the lines of something like a t90 laser rather than an og predator which definitely had bulk to it but i think those were football boots that were very much known for fitting extremely well and that is definitely the case here with the Predator 30. The off-centered lacing system runs nice and deep and allows for plenty of adjustability. And the shaping of the football boot, I think they just nailed. It's got the perfect amount of width. It tapers a little bit through the forefoot and toe box area, but not so much so that it feels like it's squeezing your feet. And if anything, the shaping really reminds me a lot of something like an Adidas Predator Absolute. Of course, they're not kangaroo leather like those football boots were, but it still feels like from this Hybrid Touch 2.0, know even after just five minutes of wear it softens up significantly and does have that little bit of stretch to it that to a certain extent does make these feel surprisingly leather-like while still giving you that kind of locked in security just from the structure of a synthetic over a natural leather material. So definitely not as soft as natural leather would have been. We can only pray that there will be a natural leather limited edition variation of this boot. I think that would be incredible. But as it is, I'm really not mad at any of the changes that they've made to the upper or the shaping coming from the Predator Accuracy. These fit phenomenally well and are extremely comfortable all the way through. As far as width is concerned, as long as you don't have ridiculously wide feet, I think these are gonna be suitable for most people. Again, it's only the toe box area that tapers a little bit, or if you're particularly wide through the toes, that might give you a little bit of trouble. But again, for most people, I think they'll fit perfectly fine. And then as far as sizing is concerned, I'm wearing these in my usual size 9.5 US, and the fit and the length is perfect. So if you are looking to get a pair for yourself, I would strongly recommend going true to size in order to achieve the best possible fit. So in conclusion, I can confidently say that the Predator 30 Elite is the best Predator model from Adidas since they brought it back in 2018. For those that are longtime Predator fans and perhaps are into the idea of the Predator 30 for nostalgia reasons, I think this is a football boot that does a really good job of feeling modern, but also having those nostalgic elements to it in terms of how it fits, as well as the grip provided by these rubber elements. It's not gonna feel like a classic Predator Mania or a classic Predator Precision, but if you wore some of the later Predator models, like a Power Swerve, like an Absolute, like even an Addy Power, I think there are some similarities from those to these that you'll really enjoy. And for those that are a little younger and perhaps have no real ties to the prime of the Adidas Predator series, I think there's just so much to 
to like about what the Predator 30 has on offer. As an overall package, it is incredibly unique in all the best ways possible. Is it the best boot on the market? I think that's something that's always tough to say based on everyone having different personal preferences, but can I safely say that I think this is a top three football boot in 2023 as well as going into 2024? Absolutely believe the hype, it's real.